you know, in these classes, we really want y'all to talk. We re really do want y'all to talk to these people, <laughs> you know, because this is what you're going to hear uh, if you don't. But uh, we'll, we'll do our best to get through. I got water. Got plenty of cough drops. We're going to ask Matt to lead us in prayer when we start. Matt. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, so much for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord, to come here and study your word. We pray for each of us to participate and help Brian through this lesson, Lord, through the other voice. I pray that each of us will gain something from this lesson we'll be able to use it in our everyday lives and spread your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Matt. Very good job. We got some news to give to you. Um, we have a problem. It's a good problem. Uh, we have more people coming back than we've anticipated recently, which is wonderful. Uh, we normally have four classes. Uh, we just went for free and not used the auditorium and thought we could get by. This class really wasn't too bad as far as being, you know, overcrowded on Sunday. We were tight, but not like the other two. Uh, so, in fact, the uh, class where Chris is teaching, right off the auditorium, they uh, they had to spill out into the lobby. And some were even in the auditorium, and Chris had to use the microphone. So, uh, what we're going to do, and we're going to announce it tonight, uh, we can talk about this Sunday afternoon, we're going to take this class and go to the auditorium. But we're going to go to a section. We're going to have the deacons rope off a section so we're not scattered all over. I mean, it's just it's just human nature to scatter. Uh, you know, the joke used to always be at work when we have a meeting, everybody would sit on the back row. And I'd always say, or they'd say, you guys think you're a church or something? And it's true, that's what we always do. I know, see, front row. But, uh, but anyway, the point is, is now that Chris's class will come up here and then John's class, which was tiny, said uh, they're going to go to the room Chris was in, which is surprisingly the second largest room. That still blows my mind, Cindy. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it. But I think it's because everybody uh, that's visiting will pop in that room. And so John's class will be, I, I call it the fake nursery, uh, the one with the window. And Chris will be up here. So we're going to try to see if that works. Uh, and try to keep up three classes at least. But anyway, that's that's uh, that's will be changed starting on Sunday. All right, we're we're on lesson one. We went through the introduction. We got this far. I wonder if gotta start over again on this. Because this lesson is is the foundation for all that we're going to be talking about. Now, these lessons don't build on each other necessarily. But this one kind of if you don't believe that it makes a difference what you believe, then the rest of this means nothing. We have to have a standard, period. And we, we preach this all the time. Uh, we preach all the time that we only want to follow the Bible. <coughs> you know, Walter, you brought me the thing a Sunday, and I finally thought about what the other elder would say. The biggest argument we used to get into, talk about truth, I would always have to have the truth. And, and, we, and we preach that, and that's true. We always have to have the truth. A lot of times that truth, though, has judgment in it. Uh, now, again, I go back to the modesty. That's still true. But now, what about the specifics? Here's where judgment is. The one him and I used to always argue about. And before you get upset when I bring it up, I was not, I was not agreeing with him on this. He would always say, we'd have people who would go on a cruise and maybe four or five couples uh, and they would take the Lord's Supper with them and then have service on a cruise. He said, that's a sin. They cannot do that. He said, because he felt they were establishing a church and then disbanding it. Now, that was his reasoning. And I said, Ross, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Where two or more gathered, and so on. We we had all kinds of discussions. Every time it come up, he said we need to do something. I said no, we're not going to do something about that. And then he'd always end up saying, "Well, I'm just speaking the truth." 
And so, which man? You're not. And they used to, and finally I said, you got to quit saying that because you're, you're speaking your judgment. But Walter, that's my point. How do you deal with that? I kept on working with him. I, I never, of course, I was another elder too, so I, he wasn't going to to bull, you know, you know um, run over me uh, and to say we're going to start disciplining these people. Yeah, you know, I don't agree with what he said. I think it's fine to do that. Uh, I appreciate people doing that. They're not doing anything, uh, but it, nonetheless, that that was what it was. That's one specific. I couldn't remember. We must have. We, that must have come up eight or nine times. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to disparage the guy. We were good friends. He's a good man. But my point being, sometimes people see their truth or their judgment as truth. And we got to be careful not to do that. If it's judgment, it's judgment. Uh, you got to be careful. We may be really strong in feeling about it. But if it's judgment, it's a judgment. Now, sometimes maybe the decisions the elders make isn't the best judgment, but maybe also you don't know all the details. Uh, and even if you do know the details, maybe you're, you're right. Maybe we didn't make the best judgment, uh, but it's still judgment, still judgment. And so you know, we gotta be, be careful because whenever you say something like, that's wrong, what does that mean? What does that mean if you say, what you're doing is wrong. If I tell you that, Michael, what you're doing is wrong, what does that mean? Depends on what I'm doing and how I feel about what I'm doing. Yeah, but if I say if I say what you're doing is wrong, well, what does no, that say I'm thinking about no. what you're doing? Is it less a sin or not? You, you're, th you're saying what I'm doing is sin. Right, that's my point. <clears throat> and so we gotta be careful. We say, no, what you're thinking is wrong. Well, wait a minute. Is it wrong truth or wrong judgment? And so I just wanted to, to reiterate that point. Because sometimes we, and it's just like Jeff said last Sunday, we really get off track on that. Uh, it may not be wrong. It may be what I think is not right. But that doesn't necessarily make it wrong. Again, we can find the truth. We can find the truth. But a lot of times there's judgment in, those, in that truth. So we, we gotta be, we got to be willing to look at the whole situation. Kurt? Well, after Paul went through a whole list of things in chapter 1 of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 1, he does say, You are inexcusable, old man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same thing. Right. He elaborates more on that in chapter 2, of course. But, yes, uh, we have to be careful sometimes what we think. We do. That doesn't mean we don't express our opinions. But I, I've, Not heard, at all. I've heard of many times someone say, well, they're wrong. Uh, in fact, the same elder. We had a church that would, um, was starting to meet only on Sunday morning, not on Sunday night. He goes, Brian, have you heard about that church? I said, yeah. They're wrong. They're, they've gone liberal. I said, Ross, they're not wrong, and they haven't gone liberal. But you've got to be careful throwing those terms out. You've got to be careful calling someone a false teacher. Because if you're calling someone a false teacher, then that's saying their soul's lost. You've got to be careful. Make sure you know what you're saying when you say someone's false teacher. If they're truly a false teacher, yes, address it. But maybe they don't have a full understanding. Maybe you don't have a full understanding. Be careful. I'm not saying we shouldn't try to. Make sure things are pure, uh, but but nonetheless, be we careful. Have through right. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. We have a right, uh, and I think the New Testament gives us that right to condemn error. Yes, yes. And in Matthew seven one, judge not that you be not judged. Well, in John seven and twenty four, when you judge. Judge with righteous judgment. Right. So one says, "Well, I don't even know what else." But when you judge, so that gives us some leeway there as to to judge our brother and to say, "Hey, I think that's wrong. I don't see a problem with that." No, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. I mean, 
I, all I'm saying is, is you know, we've got to be careful how we word things and how strong they are. You may say, I think this might not be the way to go, <laughs> or I think this is wrong. Uh, but let's talk about it. You know, and, and again, before we start calling each other false teachers, uh, we've got to really be ready to, to prove that. Yeah, along those lines, I think we need to be really careful about using the terms like liberal and conservative because to a lot of congregations, we are very liberal. Right. Um, <clears throat> you go to a one-cup congregation, they're way more conservative than we are. You look at the Pharisees, they were extremely conservative, and Jesus doesn't commend each of them for that. So I, I think that just classifying congregations like that versus just looking at what we're doing I agree. I mean, we tend to think it, we tend to be lazy and go and go to labels, you know. And, and we gotta make sure we're fair to people, you know. Uh, if if you think a church is doing something that's not scriptural, be careful that you don't judge them until you've been there. You may not know maybe what you heard, uh, and so we gotta be careful with that that type of thing. Uh, we uh, we lived in Kansas City way back. Strangest thing, there's a group of one cuppers out in that area, uh, which is usually the more conservative. I've always said, if I, were, I could worship with a one cup group, I'd be on the front row, but I could worship with one cup group, you know. And now with COVID, I don't know if anybody, I think everybody's on the front row. But, but you know, they couldn't worship with us because it would violate their conscience. And, and you'd have to study that. But this was what's so odd about that group. The way I found out about them was they had a, a TV program. It wasn't just one congregation. It was about 12 of them that pulled their money. I, well, that's inconsistent. <laughs> you know, they're one cup. Very, very conservative on that. But then they, they have church cooperation, which there's no authority for. And the scriptures for that, uh, that I can see. Uh, so I thought that was odd. But... I, I, that's all I know. I didn't, I didn't go any further investigate them. I don't label them. I mean, I call them one cuppers because that's what they said they were. You know, and and that's what they were. Uh, but nonetheless, you're right. We got to we got to be careful with the labels. I won't argue that at all. What makes the one cupper wrong when they find it on other people? It's not wrong within itself, but it's wrong if they find it on everybody else. So they yeah. have to be careful, but they got to understand what we're talking about. No, I, I won't argue that. But the point I'm getting from, what I'm trying to get at is we have truth, and we, we do have the truth, and we got to make sure that we have the standard. But there's judgment and there's truth. God has given us some principles, and we have to be able to use those fairly mm -hmm. as best we can. All right. We hit this on Sunday. What I want us to do is go to page 7. And I'd like to read a couple paragraphs here. Save my voice and bring out some of this stuff. First paragraph kind of brings us to where we're where we're we're talking about this lesson. Um, Dennis, would you read that first paragraph? Uh, yes, a very popular concept is it makes no difference what one believes in religion. We hear our religious friends say things like, faith alone will save, you just believe in the Lord. Many say sincerity is all that matters. Thus, it makes no difference what one believes we are told. We are encouraged to join the church of your choice. After all, one faith is as good as another. It is, it is, it is thought. Good moral people are sometimes equated with being Christian, no matter what their belief or practice is religiously. All this says that most of our religious friends think it really doesn't matter what one believes in religion. Is this still true? Brian, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna comment on that because like something that really rubbed me wrong in this whole first lesson is it's kind of a straw man argument to me because most of the people that I talk to in the religious world um, will not say it doesn't matter what you believe. Right. Most of them are very convicted about what they believe, True. and they know why they do it. Now we might disagree, but um, I don't know. Most of the people that are actually sincere in what they're doing, I'm sure there are people out there that say, you know, it doesn't matter. But most people I talk to that are sincere and like living out their faith, they do think it matters what you believe. And some people very, very strongly. So I, I, I don't know if 
Um, in my experience, I haven't really seen that too much. And, and that's good. And, and that's, that's why I was, I was going to ask the question, what is your experiences? My, mine's kind of the other way. Um, <clears throat> I've, had, I've had people tell me, that's why I put that up there. Oh, there's several roles that lead to Chicago. You know, and, and so what, what, which road are we here going? That's the path you need to go. And the latest, and, and I think when someone tells you, I'm fully satisfied with my religion, I don't want to discuss differences. Uh, that, that, that to me is where they're implying it doesn't make a difference. Because if I think it makes a difference for what we believe, then, and they don't, that we have a conflict here. But I, but I, I see what you're saying. Most, yeah. most of the uh, people that I've talked with of denominations believe that we're okay. They're members of the church, and they're okay. Yeah. They we're both all going to heaven. Right. And then why are you want to talk to me about religion or about you know matters of salvation when I think I'm saved and I think you're saved? And that's most of the people that I've talked with in my life. And I yeah. believe both denominational people feel right. that way. And you're you're not you're not encountering that then. Well, no, so I, I think that that's true. I think most um, people in denominations would say that we're, we are okay, but they wouldn't say that we're right. They, yeah. would, they would say that they think that we are wrong on things, and they would disagree, and they would you know, tell me why they think that. But that, they wouldn't say that that makes me um, like going to hell, so yeah. to speak. So I, it's a different mindset on that aspect of it, but they still have a conviction of why they do what they do, and they right. think we're wrong in what we do. I, I see that that's, that, that's hard to grasp, but I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I see that. I Make think it's, 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 it's the non negotiables are different. I think that if you went to, to most um, general Christians and said, you know, Christ isn't God, uh, the vast majority would say you're wrong about that. Right. Um, but, you know, maybe you talk about hell. Maybe you talk about <coughs> that is not the same to them as uh, they, they would think that that's a judgment call. Um, and so the, the non-negotiables, I think that most religious people have non-negotiables. There is a God, who is that God? Who is Jesus? Where do we get his word? They would say that those are non-negotiables, but then there's more specific nitty gritty things that um, you, maybe they would think is a judgment call. Right, and, and I think that's, that's the case. Uh, you know, I call it, they had basic Christianity, you know, the, the basic beliefs that Jesus was God, that he was raised from the dead. Now, there are some that don't believe that, but that's, that's kind of odd. You, well, not, maybe, if you will, even the mainstream or the community churches, the new establishments. But uh, uh, Ron, I'll, I'll give you a, a, uh, something I looked up. It's alarming to me, but uh, in a recent survey, says more than four out of five respondents ages 18 to 39 who profess an affiliation with some religion stated that Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus Christ all taught valid ways to God. Okay. This is the United States. Even among born again Christians, only 30% agreed with the biblical position that Jesus is the only way to God. Born again respondents were identified based on their affirmative response to the question, have you ever made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ that is still important in your life today? So you start to think about that particular segment of, of people uh, in, our, in our world today, young people, millennials, and only 30% that believe in Christ think that, that, that you could still have an affiliation with Muhammad and Buddha and, and it's a valid way to possibly get to heaven. Megan, do you, do you encounter that, or, or is what you're encountering is people that believe in Jesus, right? Yeah, I would say like Walter, you know, sincere Christians that are, you know, committed to what they believe and are confident in what they believe. I've encountered plenty of people <coughs> specifically that um, would say that they're religious, but um, maybe it's just an inherited thing that they just don't really know much about. Yeah. Um, I, but I, I, I agree with Walter that as far as like sincere Christians that have committed themselves, and I would say that they definitely have non-negotiables in their life. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think to help out the analogy, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's like the, the one cup uh, incarnation that we were just talking about. Like, So you would be okay with them, and 
I would say, yeah, I don't think you're going to hell for using one cup. But they wouldn't be okay with you. They would say, actually, I think you're doing something wrong. So I think it's the same way with most um, sincere, like, denominational Christians. They would say, well, you're doing okay. We don't agree with your opinions on things. But uh, as Ming was saying, it's not a neg- non-negotiable. Like, if, if we said that we don't believe in Jesus Christ, they would say, yeah, you're wrong, and you're not going right. to make it to heaven. Um, but I think the, the survey probably is painting with a really large brush, like, do you believe in Jesus? And most, like, a lot of people will say that on a survey. Right, whether or not they go to church, or even people that go to church that aren't really like into it, they'll still check and they'll say, "Well, I go to church on Sundays, um, but I don't really think it's the only way." But most sincere Christians um, that aren't of like the very liberal mainstream churches um, would say, "No, Jesus is the only way." I think so. I, I think it's just a matter of like what what your sample is and who you're talking I, about. I agree. Specifically. But I, I was saying, in your experience. Mm-hmm. You know, you probably aren't encountering some of those others. Right. I, I encounter more of the sincere, like, right. I think you're wrong, but that's not right. No, right. Right, the sincere Christians. Yeah. You know, or at least believers in Christ. Yeah. Mike? I, maybe I'm off base on this, but, you know, we look at this, it makes no difference what one believes in religion <laughs> as long as they believe in Christ and God and Christ. <clears throat> if I'm a sincere Christian of a Baptist congregation says, I may not agree with what you do, but you're going to get there anyway. Then they're saying it doesn't matter. That's what they're saying. Yeah. And that goes for Baptist to Methodist to Catholic to the subsets of Baptist. You've got this one, the, 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 what, this is the Southern. You've got right. however many subsets of Baptist you have. And they all kind of, well, I don't necessarily agree with what you're doing, but you're going to get there anyway. So it's another one of those things where believe what you want to believe, go to the church of your choice, and you're going to get there anyway. Because that's what makes them feel good, evidently. I would, I would say that they're saying that, um, that whatever particular issue you're talking about, they would say, I think you're wrong, but it doesn't matter. I don't mm-hmm. think they were saying believe whatever. It's, it's, again, back to the one cup. Like on that particular issue, we would say, I don't think that matters. But that doesn't mean we would say that, well, I don't think anything matters. Right, so I think that it's just their list of non-negotiables is different than ours. No, I'm not saying they're right in that. Right. I'm just saying, like, I don't think it means like they believe that nothing matters, or there wouldn't be like 15 different subsets of Baptist or 20 different subsets of like the Church of Christ. Like, usually, if there are different subsets, that means they really do think things matter, or they wouldn't split the church. Um, but or they're just looking for a way to get around something that they don't like from where they came from in the first place. Seeing congregations split up some really stupid stuff. Well, that's 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 personality usually, and 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 uh, selfishness. You know, I, I I hear what we're all saying. The point is, and I think Donnie makes it right here. It still makes a difference what we believe, uh, because there is a standard. Uh, now, granted, I've, I've been saying it from the beginning. There's judgment in this, but there is a standard. And we got we got to make sure we we have that standard. So so we're trying to talk to someone who maybe is a sincere Baptist. Uh, they believe in Christ. Uh, they believe in God. They believe in a lot of the morality, but they don't have the truth on some other things that we can clearly see in the Scripture. We can't. They can't. And, and, they're, and they're satisfied with it. How do we approach them? What do we do? How do we penetrate, like it was, that that uh, that way of thinking? You know, because I, I've encountered many a time, kind of what you're saying, Walter, where they'll say, basically they'll say, I'm satisfied with what I got. And you're okay too. Mm-hmm. How do you penetrate that? Because brethren, they're not okay. They're, they're not okay. Because they're not following the scriptures, uh, and and that, that's what we got we got to keep in mind. But my point, I'll put it this way: a lot of my dad's family is Baptist. Some of the nicest, most sincere, loving people that I've ever met. It's kind of funny. My mom's side was mostly Church of Christ. I really don't like to be around some of them. Um, they're, not the best, they're not the best people, but that's just the way they are. 
But on the other hand, my heart breaks for them because they're sincere. They're sincere, but they're sincerely wrong in a lot of things. How do you penetrate that? How do you teach someone that? How do you get past that? Because if you say, well, no, they, they have a right to their belief, then everybody has a right to their belief. Mm -hmm. There is no standard. There's got to be a standard. And, and there is one. So let's, let's go ahead and look at some of these here. Sometimes you got to realize we got shut sex and clock sex. A lot of those people are not clock sex. Well, I won't argue that. Go Jump away right here. I can't find my mouse. <laughs> Get it worse? Right. <laughs> you make those right. We talk about this fact that there is a has to be a standard, otherwise you got chaos. We understand that. And that's what we got. Mm -hmm. We have chaos. We don't have a lot of unity. Now, we have some unity on some things, like what like has been said, <clears throat> that Jesus is the Son of God. But sometimes that's about as far as it goes. Um, you know, we, we just don't have a lot of unity. Uh, and, and, and there, but there is a standard. There is a standard. Mike, comment. Yeah, there's a, there's a standard, and I think there's a lot of universality as far as what the standard is or how you apply the standard can be different because you can look at the approach that if the Bible doesn't express or permit it, then you shouldn't do it. Or the flip side is if the Bible doesn't specifically prohibit it, then we are allowed. There's a standard there, but it's two totally and completely opposite approaches to what you do with the right. standard. And so I, that was just kind of rattling around in my mind when you say we need a standard. A lot of places recognize that there is a standard to how they approach it. That's true. That's why we have our studies on authority and try to you know establish how do we approach the standard. The standard we know is the Bible. No, we know that. Um, I mean, how many times? Because somebody says, I wouldn't say we can. That's the problem. Say it again, Mike. When, when somebody says, starts going off center a little bit, and, the, and their explanation is, the Bible doesn't say right. we can't do it. That's the problem. I, I won't argue. Because, again, that gets back to the study of authority. You know, and, and we've had those. What we're trying to do here is give you some specifics. You know? <laughs> and, and again, this lesson is still kind of broad. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be some specifics as we get into some of the other ones. Uh, but anyway, we, uh, we, we have a standard. It's, it's fixed. It's the scriptures. Now, granted, there is judgment in there. I'm not going to argue. We've already, we've already established that. Uh, so there is some subjectiveness to it uh, in, in, the, in the judgments. Uh, where God has left us some room. But what we got to be careful to say, and if I, I find myself doing this too many times, well, I think or I feel, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, that's what we got to be careful. It's not what we feel, what we think. What does God say? Uh, again, what does he say about whatever topic we're going to talk about? You know, instrumental music, the use of the money of the church. You know, it's not what I think or feel. It's what does God say? There's judgment in there, and I won't argue that. But we got to make sure we, we use that standard. Mm -hmm. um, so we know there's one standard. There's these, all these scriptures here show us this one standard. Uh, but let's look just a couple of them. Let's look at um, the, the one at First Thessalonians 2. Let's see. 
Jenny, would you read that? You looked up. Eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> and we also thank God constantly for this, that we, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men. Right. So there's a difference in the word of God and the word of men. Now, granted, we're to go and do what? Go down the world and what? Preach the gospel. Preach or teach. Or teach. Which means that we got to use words too. Let's get out and do something. Right. As Brim O'Hare says, this is a gospel designed to be taught. Which means we got to use words too. But we got to first use the standard and then help people understand it from there. And this, it's going to be teaching though. So we will be using our words. But we first got to have the words of God as you read there. Again, this is basic for us. But I think it's sometimes good for us to remember this. Now let's look at, uh, I like 2 Timothy 1. Go, go to that one there. And this is kind of an aside that Paul's giving. 2 Timothy, you're up. You have one verse 3, is that right? No. 13. Uh, 13. Yep, yep, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let me see if I look up here. Sure. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1 13. Yes, sir. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. I think try 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy? Yeah. One thirteen. Yeah. No, it's just the next verse. So oh, hold, hold fast the pattern of the sound word which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> exactly. 12. No, that's okay. The key word there is the pattern or sound words. There is a pattern. And, and, and there's other times what's talked about. We have a pattern to follow. Uh, and, and we got to find that pattern. Uh, and so it does make a difference. There is a standard. You know, people may say, well, you're okay. Well, okay, maybe I am okay in their eyes. That still doesn't make it right. That still doesn't make it right for them. Maybe I'm not okay. Maybe I'm not following that pattern. You know, and, I, and, and that's one thing, brother, we've got to be ready to always look. If someone shows us well, we're not following the pattern, we need to be ready to change. And that is not easy. That is not easy. When all your life you've been told you have the truth, and you've been raised, those of us raised in church, that we have the truth. And then we find out, oh, maybe we weren't doing that right. We ask everybody else to change. We gotta be able to do the same thing. Always be ready to do that. Kurt, you got a comment? But don't you feel the problem is this? Getting, yes, this is the objective standard. It's mm -hmm. the pattern. But getting them to sit down to open it my opinion in going through the years is that many have been spoon fed from hierarchy at this denomination or that and have not taken the time to open and study this. That, that's, that is, it, it, and they're believing what those people are telling them. What you got to do is you have to encounter people like Rossi, who's got an honest heart and that's looking. Uh, I'll go back to my father. Uh, Again, strong, strong Baptist. But he had a very honest heart, thank heaven. And when he was looking at the scriptures, he was truly looking at them and not trying to validate what he was doing, but is this right or wrong? And he had to make a major change. His family did not like him making that change. He had four sisters, and they, they it took him a long time to get over that. Uh, but the point I'm getting at is you've got to have that honest heart and, and, and wanting to do that. My son-in-law is another example, uh, raised Methodist, and he, he studied himself. He said the things that aren't just don't fit. And so he had an honest heart looking for the truth. And I believe if you have an honest heart, I truly believe God's going to help you. Now, it'll be through providence. It won't be a miracle, but God's going to help you find that truth. We're getting close to where I want, I want to get to the last slide. And I appreciate all the discussions. Um, 
you know, Ivy and Judy. Yep. Did that there in their clinic. It's and, hiding now, but yeah. But uh, they, they had honest hearts. They were looking for the truth and they were asking questions and, and they weren't getting the answers from the Word of God that they wanted to receive. It was opinions, it was this and that. But so they studied themselves and, and came to the realization of the truth. And, and now they're strong Christians in this congregation. We had, we had a lady in St. Louis that um, she was looking and looking, looking. It's kind of embarrassing a little bit for me, Yvonne. Her daughter went to high school with my daughter. Her daughter goes to, to a beauty school up in New York, of all places. And she, uh, she, her mother said, well, wherever you go to church, just don't go to Catholic church, you know? But they didn't know. They, they've been searching and searching, living in our neighborhood. So her, um, her daughter meets a, um, Another a guy I'm working at a high end beauty school. Was, I'm surprised he wasn't homosexual. I'm sorry, <laughs> really. You know, I mean, I know it's, I know I'm judging, but that's odd. He was a member of the church, which is wonderful. And they start talking. He goes, "Well, come worship with me." And she came and she called her mom. And she goes, "Mom, I have found a group that studies this thing called the Bible." <laughs> and she goes, "It is and that, this, dead serious." She said, we, we, gotta, we gotta talk. So they got talking on the phone. It was the Buntings, who, that's who it was. So the Buntings started talking to her mom. And she says, man, here, here she was living in St. Louis. She goes, I wish I could find a place like that. She lived in our neighborhood. And so they, they said, well, the Buntings knew Tara, our daughter, and said, well, maybe Tara knows uh, uh, somebody, they said, Leanne, do you know Tara Powers? Yeah, I went to high school with her. I mean, this is strange. She said, oh, well, I'm sure that she knows the church nearby. Well, I mean, she lived two streets over. So we started studying with her mother. Dennis, it was the easiest study we've ever had because she had been searching so long. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the point I'm telling you about getting that is that's what we call the honest heart. The honest heart. And of course, we're on, you know, the nearest church was eight miles. You know, she was just thrilled. She was thrilled. But she'd been looking for so long. So long. But anyway, these are some questions. How do you get someone who says, I'm satisfied? How do you get them to become unsatisfied? And what I'm trying to say is, how do you do it without being a jerk? Without saying, you're going to hell if you don't, if you don't quit going this path. Um. Neither Stephen nor I were raised in any church, so okay. I'll just clarify that. When I moved from Tucson to Phoenix for a job, I needed a place to live. And my uncle said, oh, go down the road there and talk to this guy who has an empty house that is just sitting there. And so I was desperate, so I went and knocked on his door and met this older man. And he said, well, I don't know if, I, you know, I don't know you enough to go to, to, to just say, sure, I'll rent this house to you. I'll tell you what, why don't you come to church with me? And I wasn't going anywhere at the time. I had kind of been looking, but, um, but we were, you know, one of the first times I went with him, you know, he asked me about, my church experience and I said well when I was in college I joined the Baptist church and he asked me if I was baptized no oh yeah I was I was baptized in the Baptist church and he, and he just came out and he said do you think that it's possible to be baptized the right way for the wrong reason <laughs> So it was just, you know. It was, but it was, a, it was a gentle way you approached it. But it was a gentle way. Right. And I, I think that's the key, is the people that are, the, the doors we've knocked on, knocked on, basically they just want to brush me off. I say, well, I'm happy where I'm at. You know, I don't want to talk today. I, I'm not going to force myself on those people. I'm not going to do it. And we shouldn't. We shouldn't. But we, 
we need some help to have concern for their souls. And that doesn't mean that we don't, we walk away. But whatever we do, brethren, I advise us strongly, don't be unkind. And it's sometimes hard for us not to. Uh, don't be the one. We had a secretary, a secretary, yet. she says, where do you go to church? I said, well, I'm in church Christ. And immediately she goes, you're the one telling people we're going to hell, aren't you? I didn't have a chance with her. I didn't have a chance with her ever. Whoever got to her first time ruined it. So, brethren, there's differences, but we've got to make sure that we 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 treat people right. All right, we're all over the place today, but I hope we got something out of it.